remind yourself of the title always. This is the critical lesson for your TOEFL reading to improve your comprehension and as a result your score with the summary question and other questions. So one more time to improve your score as you're reading, answering questions, and especially in the summary when you're answering that question, remind yourself of the title of the reading always, regularly. That's going to improve your score. So, as you are probably familiar with, this is your TOEFL reading critical lesson. That's part of our TOEFL Talk with Noteful series. So don't worry, we're going to get into big training on this. We have an example reading we created for you. You're going to feel more confident with your comprehension and your summary question answering by the end of this lesson. So I hope you're excited. And this lesson is episode 8, already there in our series. So this is where you get to ask your questions, you know, build your vocabulary as we give the lesson to partner with us at Noteful to Success until you reach your dream score. So very excited to be with you. One more time, how do we develop this skill? How does this help us improve to get our dream score? Let's jump into the lesson. Here you see an example reading that we created for you. So we took a, the TOEFL reading material that we train you with in our courses and we simplified it for this lesson. And the main thing that I want to support you with is that when you're learning something, it's good to both use TOEFL material and when something is challenging, to use some more rudimentary material, more rudimentary exercises to build your skill. And that's our first vocabulary word that we're going to use for today to help you with. So rudimentary is meaningful and it means involving or limited to basic principles. Because what happens that can challenge a lot of students is that when you're learning something new, you're trying a new question, right? Like you just learn a new skill, for example, the tip that we have here, and you use a brand new reading with new questions. There's too much happening. It's not limited. It involves many things, time management, different question types, different strategies. So that's why you want to take a reading that you've already done before that's more rudimentary to you and then practice with it to strengthen and get in the habit of this new skill and then apply it with something new. So are you studying that way? It's very important because that's how you build your skill instead of constantly feel overwhelmed and demoralized. So demoralized is another great word. Doesn't feel good when we experience it though. But demoralized is when we, having lost confidence or hope, feel disheartened, right? So if you're feeling that way on your TOEFL journey, keep watching this series and double check how you're studying. Whenever you learn something new, a new strategy, a new technique, applying what you're learning here, work with material you've already done before, material you've mastered, to get the hang of applying this new habit before you try it with something new. And that's our third one. Look at that. For those of you who aren't familiar, getting the hang of something, getting the hang of it, a great expression, which essentially means to learn the skills that are needed, to get used to, to get comfortable with. So get the hang of your new skill first. Get the hang of it first with familiar old material that's more basic, then when you feel confident with the skill, try it with something new under TOEFL conditions and see if you're ready. So with our rudimentary reading here that matches the structure of what you'll get on the TOEFL, what we've done is we have created our example title. So let's read it together. Plant Protection by Ants. When you read the title on your TOEFL reading, you want to be focused on it. Read it carefully and remind yourself of it. So again, you know, in our courses we teach strategies for every part of the process. And so for this video we're going to concentrate on this uh, tip, right, this critical lesson. So in our, in our material we teach you to, in the first minute, read the title and the first sentences of each paragraph. That brings your brain the important keywords, it helps you see the structure of the reading, 
So as a result, when you read, it's easier for you to understand to answer the questions. It prepares you for the summary question better. And in one minute, it leaves you plenty of time to finish answering the, the questions. So it's something that we teach. We're not going to talk about it too much here. Uh, but we are going to use it to help us understand that every reading is all about the title. That's academic reading. And the TOEFL works to match that. By definition, 100%, every paragraph is about the title or it would not be included in your reading. So that's the first thing that's really going to help you build comprehension. So now that you know Plant Protection by Ants is the title, right? We read the topic sentence of a paragraph, right? So we're going to work on that together. You're going to see how it's going to build comprehension. So let's read that sentence together. Most plants secrete nectar. So these are more great vocabulary words for us. So secrete, secrete, produce, and discharge a substance, right? So, for example, a plant secretes nectar means through its, I guess you could say, membrane or skin, it gives off a little liquid, so it secretes it. And what is nectar? So nectar is probably a word you might be familiar with, but nectar is a sugary fluid secreted by plants, especially within flowers. So here we have most plants secrete nectar. Now, is that has a word in the title, right? Plant. So you see the connection. Does it have anything about protection? No. Does it have anything about ants? No. But is it related? Absolutely. Or it would not be there in your TOEFL reading. So you can understand that this nectar is somehow part of the process of ants protecting plants. So comprehension means that you're using your short-term memory to connect what you're reading now with what you read before. That is pretty much comprehension 100%. It's being able to see how what I'm reading now relates to what I read before and the overall reading itself. So the title reminds you and as a result you can now guess. So this sugary solution, how do you think it's related to plants uh, being protected by ants? Take a moment, why do you think? Well, to help, nectar we know is a sugary solution. Maybe it attracts ants. Maybe it attracts the predators that the ants are going to protect it against. We know by definition nectar has something to do with plant protection by ants. That means comprehension is in our brain. Now as we keep reading, we know we're reading to discover how is nectar related to plants being protected by ants. Now you're not reading, not knowing what's happening, you have clarity. Now also for the summary question, you have awareness that one paragraph is focused on nectar. That's an important point related to how it protects ants. You want to discover that as you read. Now, paragraph two, let's read that together. Plants are attacked by many insects that eat their leaves. This makes sense, right? Uh, plants are attacked, though, those, those are the predators what ants have to protect plants from. Now, I just said the answer to the question I was going to ask, which is ants are not mentioned here either. Two paragraphs, topic sentence, there's no ants. So there's a lot of background to this reading. But by always remembering the title as you read each paragraph, as you read sentence, right, regularly, every few sentences, every question, you just quickly remind yourself of the title. Now you know this paragraph is probably going to explain what ants protect plants from, why they protect the plants, why the plants need this protection. So the first paragraph, we can assume, 
has something to do with attracting the ants, right? Attracting the insects, nectar. We can discover that by knowing the title. The second paragraph is now talking about how plants are attacked by insects, what they're protected from. Makes a lot of sense, right? So I always like to say that it's like watching a documentary, watching a movie. There is a story to every reading. It is developed. You get background, you get development, you get conclusion, all about the title. Now we continue reading, paragraph three. The hypothesis that ants protect plants wasn't always accepted. So this is part of the story. So the title is Protection of Plants by Ants, right? So when we read this, this is basically saying just one fact about that. What, what fact? Wasn't always accepted. So probably this paragraph shares the history of the theory of the relationship between ants and plants. And probably, as you develop your skill, how is this related to the title? It's probably saying, going to share the discovery, right? So it's telling you, people didn't always think this way. So they're probably going to share how they discovered this. What evidence did they see? Because this title is a fact. It's not a possibility. It doesn't say the debate. It says protection. Let's go back to it. Plant protection by ants. That's a statement of fact. Not the question, not the theory. So that means paragraph three is going to be countered, like the topic, it's going to be developed with, here's why we now believe this. So as you're following me, what's happening to you right now, great news, is your brain is already changing how it reads. Because now you realize there's a story there. That's comprehension understanding the story, the development of the idea, that there really is a desire for the TOEFL to create an article that you might find in a research paper. And you know, for many of you, you're professionals or will be professionals who will write such papers. You have a desire to inform people of something. So you're going to use a specific technique. You're going to tell them the background. You're going to tell them why they should believe what you believe. You're going to go back and forth with different theories, but why yours is correct. So if you realize this is really a curious, interesting story that has a very clear structure all about the title, your comprehension will improve dramatically. And we're going to see how it will help you with the summary question. So now we go to paragraph four. Several kinds of plants receive this protection. Well, this makes sense, right? Now, do you see ants here? No. So what do you imagine is going to happen in this paragraph? Well, probably we're going to see several kinds of plants. So ants maybe protect several kinds of plants. Um, maybe we're going to learn how ants protect certain plants in one way but with other plants they protect in a different way. But do you see how the title gives you clarity of what the paragraph is about? So now when you're reading, you know what's happening. You're discovering, you're engaged, you're remembering the title, your comprehension is stronger. Then we go to the fifth paragraph. The nectar of plants attracts many different kinds of insects. Now, when I read that, when you read that, what do you think? How do you connect that? Okay, how is this paragraph related to plant protection by ants? Take a moment. Maybe a couple of things that can come to my head is maybe since it's the conclusion, they'll talk about other things that protect plants, similar to the way ants do. Um, maybe they're going to talk about the, they're going to give more details about the insects that are threatening to plants and how ants protect them. So it's allow yourself to become curious and open. And remember, it is all about the title. So comprehension is what you just did. It's reading 
with the sense of how is this related to what I just read. So the amazing thing is we just trained it together. With every question five times, you've trained the habit of how is this related to? How is this related to? That is comprehension. Now I know vocabulary matters, uh, the, com the grammatical complexity of the sentence matters, you know how complex it is. So that's why we pick something rudimentary because the first thing you, you want to build one skill at a time, right? Uh, for example, the boxing, uh, boxing example, right? If you just learned how to box, so this is the my imagining boxing, right? If you just learned how to box, if you want to compete, you wouldn't compete with a professional who's undefeated, who's put everybody in the hospital that they fought against, right? That's a recipe for demoralization and disaster. So this is the important way that you want to train. Focus on one thing at a time, which is difficult because it's so easy to become distracted, but that's why the TOEFL journey can be longer for you and many other students than it needs to be because there is a specific way we need to study when we want to generate big results, when we want to improve 5, 10, 20 points on our TOEFL to 5, 10, 15 points on the reading. It can be done, it will be done, and this is how we do it. So now let's see this application to the summary question. So again, 12 years, if you're not aware, noful has been helping you with the TOEFL for 12 years. So you can imagine how many readings we've studied, created, how many students we've helped improve the reading. So the reason why I bring that up is because you're here also to learn the patterns that we've discovered so you don't have to invest that much time. So in the summary question, you have a topic sentence in bold that is meant to be the first sentence of a paragraph that summarizes the reading. Now that you know it's all about the title, now that we read the first sentences and you understand the structure, the idea of the story, you can answer this question better. So when we scroll back up here, and we see here, we see that there are five steps in the story, and it's usually a beginning, middle, and end. So we can assume, we can sense, this seems like the first third of the reading. It's giving me background information, probably how ants are attracted to plants, why they go there, why they protect them. The second paragraph, why they need protection, perhaps how ants protect them. Then the interesting thing is the middle, for me, is represented by paragraph three, kind of the history of this theory in science. How did we discover, how did we move from a incorrect previous belief or unaccepted to now accepted, right? So a little bit of that story. And over here, we get some conclusions, right? Some kind of ending piece about maybe examples, exactly how do ants protect them, what kind of um, plants get protected, uh, do other insects protect them, or maybe we learn more about the predators. So it's just like a documentary, right? Here's a background of what's happening, here's how this theory and this knowledge came about, and here are some more specifics about how ants do this. So one, two, three. Now the summary question asks you to choose three answers that complete the paragraph. Now you're reading to succeed. And here's the amazing thing that you'll start to notice. When your comprehension improves, so does your confidence. So does your focus. You answer more questions correctly. As your comprehension of the reading improves, you guess more accurately. This is a big deal, right? You can consider this a keystone habit. So keystone, right, comes from architecture. And you see that image there, right? And so that will help as we read the definition. A central so stone at the summit, the top, summit means top, of an arc locking the whole together. So keystone 
is meant to emphasize something critically important. Because if you take away the keystone, what happens to the arc, the curved structure? It falls apart. So this is a keystone habit. If you are not aware and regularly reminding yourself of the title, comprehension will fall apart because it's all about the title. And in fact, that's why the summary question exists. That's why they decided to create it, to evaluate if you know that and if you know how the paragraphs develop the idea of the title. But of course, two things. You're here for strategy as well as comprehension. Comprehension first is what we always teach you and a strategy second because strategy supports comprehension and when you don't comprehend, strategy helps. But you need both to improve. So the strategy is, very simply, which answer choices actually deal with the title? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disappear, give you one, give you two minutes. And in those two minutes, I just want you to decide, does this answer choice relate directly to the title? Does it have language that is about the title? Does it match my kind of sense from reading the first sentences of what this is about? Right? So I'm going to give you two minutes and just decide, yes, it has all the ideas of the title, or no, it doesn't. So two minutes to do that. Let's get that timer up here. So three choices. So three choices are about the title, three are not. See if you can discover them. Good luck starting now. Okay, now, the key thing is to keep it simple. We don't want to think too much because if we overanalyze, we will confuse ourselves. So you really want to, how do we allow it to be simple? Is this what 33% of the reading was about? Is this what we feel is related to the title? And then we just go with that. So let's look at A together. The biggest benefit of plants from ants is that ants attack other insects that eat the leaves of plants. This, I hope you had a solid yes to. The title is uh, Plant Protection by Ants. This matches it very well. It even matched the idea of our second paragraph, right? We can imagine it was being developed there. 
and the sentence in bold usually does deal with the first paragraph or the introduction. So you see how the sentence in bold begins the story. Now we continue, B, many kinds of plants are protected by ants. I hope that was a solid yes. Plant protection by ants. And you see that the several kinds is related to paragraph four, kind of the end. So let's see, we assume that one answer choice will be about maybe the hypothesis before it wasn't always believed, but we know it needs to be about the title. Now let's look at C. Not all plants produce nectar. Is that like a big bell in your head, bing? No, that's not about, there's no ants there, there's no protection. Did you read about nectar? Yes, but is that a summary of 33% of the reading? Is that related to the title? No. It is a red herring. So red herring is another great word to be aware of. So a red herring is in hunting they use this, but it's something. So it refers to an animal or like a fish that I think confused dogs who were searching for what their owner shot down like a bird and so it's as a result even though it's a specific fish it's something especially a clue that is or is intended to be misleading or distracting so that nectar is meant to catch the first paragraph and distract you like the like the person, the, the, the dog hunting for the, the bird that the owner, you know, knocked down with a shot. So there's this strong fish smell, so the, the dog is distracted. So this is distracting us. So that's a red herring, that's a no. D, the sugar that nectar contains is what attracts ants to plants. That sounds really good, right? Maybe. But it is not something that's an obvious yes, because what's missing from the title? What's missing from what this is about? Protection. So we look at E. Biologists now agree. Now remember the middle? We were expecting this from our good reading, our comprehension, the theory, the hypothesis. Biologists now agree that nectar attracts and that these ants you missed a word there. Apologize if that confused you, but you can see that this was strong. So biologists now agree that nectar attracts ants and that these ants protect plants in order to protect their supply of nectar. So that matches the middle of the reading, right? And it also gr agrees with the title. So now we look at F. Most colonies of ants contain about 3,000 members but some species have been known to contain over a hundred thousand. We see how this might be a detail in the reading, but it has real disconnection with the title. So I hope this didn't confuse you and you were, at least were able to detect all the other answers. But do you now see how reading this way not only improves your comprehension, but helps you with the summary question and every question overall. So I hope you feel good about this. I hope you feel strong and ready to review. So bravo, we completed our lesson. Now let's review. All right, so the first word we learned, rudimentary, basic and fundamental. Next, demoralized. That's when maybe we're training with material that's too challenging and we feel discouraged get the hang of it. And when I search this, I search get hang of it, but that was just to bring up the definition. Remember, it's get the hang of it, right? So when you get the hang of something, that means you get used to it, skillful at it, comfortable with it. Secrete, we know that means to give off, uh, to produce through the skin or a membrane. Nectar, right? I hope that the tip that we reviewed was like a nectar, right? 
remember the title remind yourself of the title always to dramatically boost your comprehension keystone a keystone habit for comprehension is this lesson which i'm very happy that you completed and red herring there's a lot of red herrings on the TOEFL when it comes to wrong answers right which we know is something meant to distract you and we have the interesting story of where that word and expression come came from so once more to make sure that we have it remind yourself of the title always on your TOEFL reading read the title with care allow yourself to remember it every few sentences every paragraph especially connect with it on the summary questions it will guide you and support you and so next a very important question for you will you apply this tip from now on when you do your TOEFL readings yeah hope so it will help you'll notice it day after day week after week start to make a difference but remember to take your time with it and so another way we want to engage you because we really liked those of you who submitted in the last episode your sentence which shared what your biggest lesson was awesome today we want to ask you what challenges you most on your TOEFL reading you'll go ahead and comment on the video share with us that yes you'll apply the tip from now on and what help you need on the TOEFL reading after what we've covered and that will inspire our next episode and it's always great to see your messages and so with that said it's time for us to give you the first thumbs up because you've made it to the end of the episode. You studied hard. You trained hard. Bravo to you and your hard work of mastering this language, which is not easy, working hard to succeed on your exam for your dream. You're not alone. Success is coming. Thumbs up to you. And if you like this video, if this episode, if you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up keeps us energized and excited and, and lets us know how each video each episode is doing with you if you haven't subscribed already make sure to hit that subscribe button so you always know when the new episode is released and we stay in partnership and so for those of you who are here the main thing I want to ask if you're not already partnered with us with one of our courses online you know are you ready to keep working together so that way instead of working about an hour a week we can be working 20 24 hours a week week after week to get you to your dream score because as you've learned there's a lot of things to learn to boost your score and when we don't learn them that's when this journey can sometimes be much longer than we want to be so that image right there is to remind us that we're here for you those of you who need the biggest improvement who've been struggling with the TOEFL for months or years and it's kind of tough because there's these things that you need to improve that are challenging and you need that regular support you're not alone you're not alone because we're here to support you and there's a lot of students just like you who are working for tough improvements that take time and energy and so to guide you I want to help you right now and also encourage you to join so that you know how we work and why we're effective so you want to think about your journey in three parts the first is how much you study so we created this slide for you because the average student who succeeds studies 24 plus hours a week so I know that might be a lot but that is a very powerful number of hours that will reduce your journey help you build memory and understanding more quickly it's important However, even if you study two hours a week, it is so much stronger than zero. So even if it's 12 hours, you know, 10 hours, no problem, it helps, but aim for that 24. So two, how effectively do you study? And that's where you saw our guidance in this training episode, because it's about focusing on individual habits that you want to improve rather than just practicing many questions or many readings because that doesn't improve your score that just helps you see more information and what we need are stronger skills so keep that in mind how are you studying are you building the skills or finding yourself practicing kind of jumping around different material not really noticing improvement 
The next thing is what you study. So the most important thing is to improve, remember that rudimentary vocabulary word and keystone? What you study matters in the sense that you want to study familiar material. You want to be reviewing your training, reviewing your practice, 80% of your study time, and just maybe 20% working with new material, new, new questions. That way you're developing skill rather than just practicing a lot. So I hope that makes sense. And so in our courses, that's what we concentrate on. We emphasize supporting you to study as many hours as you can, guiding you with your study schedule. Make sure that you have your own if you don't already so you can see how you're studying. Your goal, whether it's 10 or 20, 24 hours plus, but any hour of study is good. So I don't want you to feel pressure. I want that to be your goal. And we're going to help you do that with the courses. Uh, the next thing is making sure you're studying effectively, building the habits and skills more than practicing different questions, and also what you study. Make sure that you're reviewing material, you're training things more than just, you know, watching more or, or practicing more so that you can get rid of this TOEFL. So in order for it to be easier for you, that's how the courses that we offer work. That's why if you're struggling, I want you to feel comfortable clicking the link below. It'll take you to little learn a little bit more about us, how we work, and how to get started. So as usual, it was a pleasure. So have a wonderful day. Until next time, Joseph from the Noteful team. Bye-bye.